came here 22 years ago and we bought 34 acres of land because where we were living in Sussex you couldn't afford to buy a house or a garden shed or anything so it was a case of just taking a gamble and buying some land and hoping that uh, we could get planning permission to build a house one day and we were sent some details of this place by the estate agents and uh, we just wandered down here one day on a wet cold wild windy misty day and wandered about weren't didn't really know what we were looking at didn't know what we wanted it for um but we decided we'd buy it put in a bid and suddenly the ball was rolling it was a bit daunting after that and then we came another time and suddenly it was a better day the mist had gone and the rain had gone and there was this amazing view way way all across to Dartmoor and South Devon and Mid Devon and it was that was why we bought it because it was just a, a wonderful piece of land really and a wonderful had a wonderful character lots of hills and dips and valleys and bits of woodland but it was in a terrible terrible state terribly neglected and the previous guy had just abandoned it really for sheep who'd just gone onto and decimated the woods and the wildflowers and the hedges and the banks. And it was just a case of starting again with little experience, I suppose, on our part. Um, but it was just a case of a real sharp learning curve, as they always say. And uh, gradually, bit by bit, we carved out a lifestyle. Uh, never had any money, but just kept on digging and scratching and pulling and burning. And eventually we I've turned it into something now and people come and tell us, you know, you've got quite a wild place here now and it, it is good and it's, it's, I suppose it's something to be proud of to see the hedgerows looking better again and the wildflowers returning, especially in the fields. The, you know, in the springtime, the flowers here are, are really beautiful now and wildlife's returned. We've got woodcock, we've got moorhen and that's got to be a good thing. It's only a small acres of land so you're never going to get a terrific um, population of animals here but it does give you a sense of achievement, I guess. And... Um, to then be able to build a house and build our own house, that was a real achievement, I guess. I never ever thought to this day that I would end up building our own place. Um, it's ended a bit sort of quick, weird and funky and everything else, but it's something that we've built and it's ours. And um, I think if anybody was thinking of doing it, do it. And if you're not sure where to begin, just start and um, you'll soon get a grasp of it. The information's out there these days, the internet's there. I think we're just, so bullied by professional bodies and government regulations that you shouldn't do things, that you should buy a starter home, whatever a starter home is. That's a stupid bloody word, I think, because it just makes you disillusioned with what you've already bought. And, uh, you know, a home is a home for God's sakes. You shouldn't have to have a starter home and a mid home and a finish home. A home is your home. If you're going to spend £200,000 on it, you should love it, but not feel as soon as you move into it, you've got to move on because it's a starter home, which is what happens in this country. It's disgraceful. And um, we were lucky to build our own place. So if you can, by all means, do it. The information's there and it, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. I think we get another thing we get caught up in is this whole thing that we've got to have four bedrooms and it's all got to be en suite. And, you know, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep it real. And... Uh, You'll find out very quickly that you can do it yourself. Yeah, you'll make mistakes on the way and geez, you'll bang your fingers and all that other stuff, but it'll come together. It really does. And uh, it does give you a sense of achievement. I'm waffling now, Red. That was good. That was it. small cabin up on the top of our hill, way up on the top there, and it's made out of post and rail fencing. These are the rails, so they sort of get a 4 by 2 run on it, and the posts, I found all this stuff in an old barn. These are the posts, obviously they're pretty rotten, but once you run an electric planer through them and a bit of sanding, I end up with these sort of, these are the same sort of posts. And these will be the sort of, uh, make the frames around the door. And I'm having two sliding doors in it, so they'll make the sort of supporting structure for it. So they, cluck, they clean up pretty well. And then I just run an electric plane over all of this sort of stuff. And there's some nice colouring coming through a lot of the wood. I love all this sort of piney coloured wood and just, just got a lot of character. 
and it gives you a kind of Scandinavian alpine feel which I really like and, uh, but it's only going to be sort of 8 feet by 24 feet so it's going to be small but as I read somewhere the other day the world gets a whole lot bigger when you live smaller <laughs>